Regarded as the foremost military treatise, Sun Tzu's The Art of War consists of only 13 chapters, totaling 6,000 characters. In the first chapter of The Art of War, Sun Tzu presents a resounding motto, All warfare is based on deception. While this statement encapsulates his profound military wisdom, it has sparked criticism from many later generations who find it lacking in benevolence and righteousness. So, how should we interpret the phrase, all warfare is based on deception? What historical significance does it carry? And how does Sun Tzu succinctly summarize this viewpoint? In this episode, I will delve into the historical significance of this statement. War, a creature born in antiquity, has always relentlessly pursued victory. On June 5, 1944, just before the Normandy landings, General Patton addressed his Third Army with these words, The essence of war is bloodshed, and its meaning is the taking of lives. If you do not take their lives, they will surely take yours. This sentiment became an iron law of warfare, leading to vastly different strategies employed in the field compared to other domains. Taking the field of sports as an example, athleticism places importance on fair competition and balanced forces. However, war presents a stark contrast by emphasizing asymmetric confrontations, often favoring the mighty against the weaker. The objective of warfare is to obliterate the enemy, and even if total annihilation is not achieved, the price exacted from the adversary must be substantial. In sports, rules and penalties for fouls exist, in basketball, five fouls can result in ejection, while in soccer, infractions may lead to yellow or even red cards. However, the realm of warfare lacks clear punitive mechanisms, virtually devoid of codified regulations. If one were to speak of rules in warfare, the only rule is that there are no rules. In asymmetrical battlefields, a wide array of strategies can be employed, as long as they prove effective. This divergence in the rules of engagement between war and sports underscores their evident disparities. In ancient Chinese military treatises, one particular work known as the Samafa emerged during the Warring States period. Within its pages lies a thought-provoking phrase, adaptations of strategy arise from the necessities of war, not from loyalty and benevolence. This underscores that in the context of warfare, concepts of morality and ethics hold little significance. Human comprehension of this defining aspect of warfare has evolved over an extensive historical timeline, rather than being grasped in a single moment. In ancient China, a noble bearing held prominence in the conduct of war, resulting in numerous restrictions and conventions. For instance, both sides were expected to finalize their formations before initiating combat. Upon victory, pursuit of the defeated was discouraged. Within a range of 45 kilometers, pursuit was deemed unsuitable. Moreover, it was deemed inappropriate to mount an offensive upon the death of an enemy monarch. These stipulations strongly mirrored the demeanor and principles of the nobility, reflecting a particular code of conduct. Let us once again revisit the case previously mentioned in the video, the story of Song Xianggu. As the Chu army was in the midst of crossing the river, Zi Yu urged Song Xianggu to swiftly launch an attack the half-cross strategy. However, Song Xianggong staunchly rejected this counsel, citing that the enemy had not yet completed their river crossing, rendering an attack untimely. Subsequent to the enemy successfully landing and forming their ranks, Zi Yu once more urged Song Xianggong to seize the moment and attack, as this presented the sole opportunity, the backwater strategy. Nevertheless, Song Xianggong again refused this suggestion, explaining that the enemy's formation had not yet fully solidified, and the timing for an attack had not arrived. Only after the enemy's formations were in place did Song Xianggong finally issue the order to attack. The outcome is self-evident. 
Due to a significant disparity in military strength, Song Xiangong met with failure. Hence, in the heat of battle, concepts of benevolence, righteousness, and morality find little traction, and personal demeanor cannot dictate the course of events. In the era preceding Sun Tzu, nobility often adhered to this paradigm during warfare. Yet, this paradigm underwent transformation within Sun Tzu's strategic doctrine. Just as the Book of Han, Treatise on the Arts, stated, from the spring and autumn period to the warring states period, strategies for achieving surprise victories and deceiving the enemy continuously emerged. Sun Tzu lived during the spring and autumn period, a time when Chinese society was undergoing profound transformations, transitioning from slavery to feudalism. Against this backdrop, Sun Tzu, in response to societal changes and the demands of warfare, discarded conventional notions of benevolence, righteousness, and propriety. He forthrightly asserted, all warfare is based on deception. Through this declaration, he conveyed to future generations that within the realm of war, the inexhaustible variations and strategies hold greater significance than morality. It is precisely due to the fact that Sun Tzu's art of war originates from the essence of warfare, emphasizing cunning and adaptability, that the methods employed in warfare diverge sharply from those found in other domains. We also cannot simply apply the strategies of deceit from the art of war to domains outside of warfare. If such strategies were introduced into every facet of life, it would undoubtedly lead to chaos and contradiction. There is no doubt that warfare possesses its unique nature. Therefore, we must judiciously select from its teachings those thoughts that prove beneficial to life, applying them to suitable circumstances. This brings us to the second point I've elucidated. War is distinct from the straightforward duels of nobility. It still underscores the significance of adaptation. On the battlefield, tactics outweigh morality. Therefore, we shouldn't excessively criticize the phrase, all warfare is based on deception. In the upcoming video, I will delve into the third aspect in detail, how Sun Tzu masterfully concludes his concept of all warfare is based on deception. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Please remember to subscribe to my channel so you can be the first to receive the latest content updates. Your subscription and support mean a great deal to me, enabling me to continue crafting more intriguing videos. In the future videos, I'll continue to bring you more captivating content, sharing my thoughts and perspectives. Don't forget to share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section as we engage in collective dialogue. Thank you all, and until next time.